In this episode of Edge of Extinction, I'm going to refer to a couple of papers. So you might want to go to Nature Bats Last to find these papers, make sure I'm quoting everything in context. You can find Nature Bats Last at GuyMcPherson.com. First, you might want to take a look at the blog post that I put up on April 30th, 2021, in which there was a video and several articles included I quoted Jennifer McKinnon at Scripps Institution and also at the University of California, San Diego. And I quoted her specifically in CBS News piece posted on April 23rd, in which she said she expects an ice-free Arctic in 2022, the first ice-free Arctic in 2022. I also quoted James Anderson, the Harvard atmospheric scientist, famous for discovering the link between chlorofluorocarbons and the shrinking of the ozone, creation of those ozone hole over Antarctica. And after a presentation in Chicago, he was quoted in Forbes on January 15th, 2018, and he said, quote, the chance there will be permanent ice in the Arctic after 2022 is essentially zero. So, both McKinnon and Anderson expect the first ice-free Arctic in 2022, and then, of course, after that, they go on to explain that the nature of dynamics around the whole planet will be changed profoundly. And so I would expect, as I've written in peer-reviewed papers, I would expect the loss of habitat for human animals around the globe to be complete in 2023, after that first relatively short-term period of an ice-free Arctic Ocean. And then in 2023, things get completely out of hand with an increasing longer period with no ice in the Arctic. <clears throat> in response to this information, somebody on YouTube responded, how do we get a blue ocean event in 2022 if the minimum sea ice in the latest fall 2020 low was around 3.75 million square kilometers? Getting down to 1 million square kilometers or less in just two years doesn't seem realistic. <clears throat> a seemingly fair question. Oh, and I should point out that he writes getting down to 1.0 million square kilometers, and that's the definition of an ice-free Arctic because we can't keep track of every little piece of ice in every nook and cranny and bay. So anything at or below one million square kilometers of ice qualifies as an ice-free Arctic. So <clears throat> I went to a search engine, spent approximately 15 seconds there, and got an answer to this person's questions. I responded quite easily. Remember, he says, how do we get a blue ocean event in 2022? That would be the first blue ocean event the following summer in the Northern Hemisphere, 2023, would be characterized by completely wacky weather. So I write quite easily based on recent data published in a peer-reviewed paper that provides a review of the topic, and I refer there with a link to the open access paper I'll mention shortly. <clears throat> Quote, in a recent study published in the Cryosphere, University of Leeds researchers found that global ice loss had increased at a record rate, with the Earth losing 28 trillion metric tons of ice between 1994 and 2017. Of concern, the rate of such loss also sped up from 0.8 trillion metric tons per year in the 1990s to 1.3 trillion metric tons per year in 2017. That's a lot. And that was reported in a non-peer-reviewed article at Manga Bay on March 16th, 2021. The title of that piece is, As Arctic Sea Ice Hits Annual Maximum, Concern Grows Over Polar Ice Loss, colon, Studies. Yes, and that's the concern, all right. Here's a couple of the key points to start off this article. One, a new study has documented drastic ice loss in both the North and South Polar regions. Scientists found that the single biggest reduction came from Arctic sea ice. The Earth lost 7.6 trillion metri metric tons of it in the last three decades. And that's a lot. Another key point, 
Another new study shows that the last bastion of old, thick, multi-year ice in the Arctic, north of Greenland and Ellesmere Island, is diminishing as the stability of the Nares ice arches declines. Blockages which work like a cork in a bottle to stop multi-year ice from flowing out into the Atlantic. And I've earlier mentioned in this space this Nari's ice arches, which are sometimes called the last ice area of the Arctic. A few quotes from this paper in Manga Bay then. Winter maximums seem to have little correlation to summer minimums. And moreover, the ice in the Arctic is thin, which any regular viewer of this channel will know, and has been thin and thinning for the last few years. September Arctic sea ice extent is decreasing at an average rate of 13.1% per decade, which is a very rapid rate of environmental change. Another key quote, both polar regions continue losing ice fast, with the biggest losses thus far occurring at sea, in a reference to the peer-reviewed paper I'll mention shortly. And then finally, the last ice area is referred to again. Every December, ice arches form in the northern or southern part of the Nares Strait. And I most recently pointed out in this space in detail that this is the last ice area on January 13th, 2021. So you can track down that video as well. Or look at GuyMcPherson.com. Finally, the peer-reviewed article in question comes in the cryosphere, published by the European Geosciences Union. This one in particular published on January 25th, 2021, and written by Thomas Slater and eight additional scholars. It's called Review Article. Earth's Ice Imbalance. A imbalance. Again, published in the Cryosphere, an open access journal. So if you go to guymcpherson.com, you can read that paper, and I would recommend it. You can also read the popular paper that makes the science easy to tolerate, written in Manga Bay. And you can also follow links back to my previous work. In any event, I think we've been very fortunate to have avoided an ice-free Arctic thus far, but it looks like the first ice-free Arctic is going to occur next year, 2022, for a short period of time. And then in 2023, the size of the, or the length of, of period during which we have an ice-free Arctic will continue to increase, and I suspect 2023 will see the loss of habitat for human animals around the globe. This is not something I'm happy about, by the way, but it seems to be consistent with the science so far. Also bear in mind that I think we've been incredibly fortunate in that one of the most conservative of peer-reviewed journal articles, the annual reviews, in this case the annual review, review of Earth and Planetary Sciences, concluded in a paper published in 2012 that paper projected, based on a linear projection, an ice-free Arctic in 2016 plus or minus three years. It didn't happen. It didn't happen in 2013, 2014, 2016, and so on up to 2019. It didn't happen in 2020. It's not going to happen in 2021, as nearly as we can tell at this point. Could we have the first ice-free Arctic event in 2022? Of course. Could we have catastrophic impacts of an increasingly blue ocean in the Arctic from that point forward? Yes. And the only surprising thing to me is that it hasn't happened so far. I think we've been very fortunate. Might I remind you again that at the edge of extinction, only love remains.